Hey, what's up, Fantasy Fans? This is Mitchell with FF Real Talk. And uh, first things first, uh, I just want to apologize for last week not having a video. If y'all can hear, um, my voice is deeper than usual. Um, I'm hoarse from the flu that I'm still recovering from. But last week, I just couldn't do it. It just wasn't happening. I tweeted it out to everybody that I wasn't going to be doing a video. But there are some people that follow me here that don't follow me on Twitter. So I'm sure a number of you wondering what happened or whatever. But that's the reason I'm still recovering from the flu. And last week, it was just the worst. So there was no way I was going to go through it. It's got to be first things first. And health is going to be that. But enough of that, we just had a, another situation where health was just paramount in week eight and the number and loads of in, um, injuries that uh, players suffer. We lost a lot of the heavy hitters. We lost Le'Veon Bell. We lost Matt Forte, lost Steve Smith Sr., and a number of other peripheral players and it's going to be tough sledding for all the owners of them. And I own several of them in the spread out leagues that I have. So it's going to be a lot of recovery coming from this situation. And in particular for the uh, Le'Veon Bell owners. But uh, we're just going to get right into uh, this week's uh, waiver additions. And number one, I don't even have to tell y'all who it is. Y'all already know who it is. It's D'Angelo Williams. But before we even get to any analysis about him, I just want to say as a whole, including myself, the fantasy community has completely failed in terms of this D'Angelo Williams thing. In ESPN leagues, he is 27% owned. That is absolute failure. I said long time ago, after week two, that all Le'Veon Bell owners should own D'Angelo Williams. Le'Veon Bell was 100% owned. D'Angelo Williams will be 100% owned. And I'm sure some of y'all are asking, well, are you telling us we need to own the handcuff to all of our starters? No, because D'Angelo Williams isn't a handcuff. D'Angelo Williams isn't a backup. D'Angelo Williams happens to be a number one running back that happens to be on the same team with the arguable best running back in football. That makes for a different situation. A player like that needs to be owned. He's not Alfred Blue. He's not Shark Hendrick West. We don't know who he's going to be fully. He's not Bilal Powell. This guy is a number one runner that just happens to be in this position. And for all Le'Veon Bell owners that don't have him, and it's proof out there because he's 27% owned, it's nobody's fault but yours. But I take responsibility too because... I'm in leagues where the Le'Veon Bell owner doesn't own D-Will, but he's also on the waiver wire. So I wasn't even thinking of that. I will. I think about it, but the whole point is we get so caught up in our guy's going to survive. So let's just leave all handcuffs on the bench. But again, I wasn't factoring in something that I well know. Certain players are bigger than handcuffs or backups. This guy's a number one runner. But I digress. More than anything is after this week, he's going to be 100% on and he should have been already. So this is just a lesson to myself and everybody. When you have a player like that, which is a rare thing, there isn't a backup like him in the league that's a number one runner immediately the moment he gets a chance. You saw it in the first two weeks. And besides Devontae Freeman, I believe in my heart, that D'Angelo Williams is going to be the best waiver addition of this season going forward. He's going to save people's playoff runs, and he's going to help propel people into the playoffs. So whoever has the number one or number two waiver claim, Christmas has come early. And that's all I have to say about D'Angelo Williams. Number two is James Langford. This is a player that the Bears reportedly love, but he's just another example of a handcuff that you leave on the wire until needed, unlike D'Angelo Williams. Now's that needed point, though. Matt Forte is down for the foreseeable future. Don't know when he's coming back. So it looks like Langford's going to be heavily relied on, and but we know that doesn't always translate to success, but he got 12 carries for 46 yards, which isn't bad. 
they're going to rely on the run. They always do. So Langford has a good chance to be a solid ad and a season saver. So he's definitely the second person I'd be grabbing if you couldn't get D'Angelo Williams. Number three, Benjamin Watson. I just wanted to see it happen one more time, more than twice. But there's a definite rapport between Watson and Breeze. Nine catches for 147 yards and a touchdown. And what's crazy is the past three weeks, he's been targeted 27 times. That's number one wide receiver type numbers. And right now, excuse me, right now he's in the conversation. Yeah, I might be stopping every so often for catch my breath for <laughs> if I have to cough or something. So bear with me. But, um, Right now, he's in the conversation for top, he's definitely top 10, but top, top top five tight end. Right now, there's only a few that I would want more, like Gronk, Barnage, Kelsey, Eifert, maybe Gates and Graham and, and Olsen, but he's in that argument. So after this week, he should be fully on because uh, we can all do better. With, we could all have a better tight end, and he's readily available out there. Number four, Michael Floyd. You're starting to see the emergence of the talent that he's always had. Four um, catches for 106 with a touchdown. But what's more importantly, importantly, excuse me, is this is the product of two other things. It's the product of the explosive offense that he plays on and a product of the fact that John Brown isn't 100% healthy. The wire is getting thin out there. We know that we're in week, we're heading into week nine. It's very little out there, and for a fact that we got a talented guy like that who has a chance to be number one in given weeks, you definitely want to have him. So don't hesitate to pick him up. He's definitely somebody you want to own and can make a difference in your playoff runs. Number five, it's a dual ad. Stevie Johnson, Malcolm Floyd. With Keenan Allen lost for the year with a lacerated kidney, that sounds just rough. Uh, the number one wide receiver duties almost by default become a mixture of Johnson and Floyd. We all know Stevie Johnson's a high possession guy with some vertical talent, and he's had a number one role before on a team. While Floyd is without question the deep threat, and we've seen his athletic ability and his prowess when he's healthy. Both become high on this list, and uh, between the two, I think I would go with Stevie Johnson if I had a choice between which to add. But both of these guys should be fully owned. You you see what Phillip Rivers is doing right now. He lost his number one receiver target. It's no, it's a no-brainer that one of these two guys is got or both actually are going to reap the benefits of this situation. So definitely grab for him, either one of the two rather. Number six, Kamar Aiken. There's no numbers I'm going to sit here and speak of. This is simply default. Steve Smith Sr. is out for the season with an Achilles injury. And he's on the list for just that reason. And with Rashad Perriman still a ways away, if you're struggling at wide receiver, I mean, somebody's got to get it done. But with me, to me, Kamar Aiken is no better than the way I view um, um several players that could be number one on a team or whatever have you. Like with the situation with Dez going out and Williams stepping in, I've never trusted him and I told you I don't like him. But Kamar Aiken, I don't particularly like him, hasn't showed anything. But again, with your number one gone, it's going to be a concerted effort to get Kamar Aiken moving, so if you need a wide receiver, you can have him. Now, I probably should have moved him under the next guy, now that I'm thinking about it, but Willie Sneed is number seven. This is a 100% gut call on my, um, on my part, but after a seven touchdown performance by Breeze and the Saints, I have this crazy feeling that the Saints are and the wide receivers on the team are going to hit pay dirt for the rest of the season. I believe that's the type of performance that propels you and is everybody's going to benefit for that. 
for all the Cooks owners that have struggled this year. I think it's going to start paying off from here forward. And I think Willie Sneed is going to follow suit in that. You've seen some somewhat inconsistent play, but over the past few and over the past few weeks, his ownership has dropped down to below 60%. So he's presently more available now. He's shown his talent in spurts, and he has it. And coming off a six-catch, two-touchdown game, I feel there's momentum brewing. And But don't be overly enthusiastic, but there's room for optimism in my opinion. Number eight, Jay Cutler. We're still in the bye week squeeze, and I tell you guys all the time, a lot of it is all about trying to find somebody to plug and play. And oftentimes it's really hard with quarterbacks. But – and this week is no different with the fact that all Palmer owners and Russell Wilson owners, they're going to need a quarterback to fill in. Since Jay Cutler's return after missing week three, his lowest fantasy output has been 17 points. And I know, and you know, certain quarterbacks who will remain unnamed aren't getting 17 points um, regularly. And in the last two games, Jay Cutler's got 19 in both games. That's more than suitable for fantasy. So it's a no-brainer to me for anybody who's trying to add for uh, Carson Palmer or Russell Wilson, get Jay Cutler because it looks like he's gonna have he's he's got his bears in a row, and he's facing the San Diego Chargers defense that is next to dead last with a total of 16 fantasy points the whole season. You can't have a better matchup. So you definitely need to own Jay Cutler if you need a quarterback. Number nine is David Cobb. <clears throat> Three things come into play here. Mariota, I said it before, cannot do it alone. Number two. None of the Titans running backs have taken the mantle when given the opportunity, and that's Sankey and Antonio Andrews. And number three, brand new news, some of y'all probably don't know it, Ken Wisenhunt was just fired. I smell many resurgence, and just like sort of what happened with Miami, Marcus Mariota is banged up and Kendall Wright is dealing with a knee issue and we don't know if he's going to play this week or when he's going to return. The running game is going to have to get going. And oftentimes when there's a mid-season coaching change, they have to depend on the run, especially when you got a new quarterback like Mariota. Now, we don't know much about Cobb. We know that he was a favorite during camp. But we also know, we don't know if he's for sure going to play this week or, and I've heard he's a bit overweight. This is a sheer lottery ticket, but I just have a hunch between those three running backs, he's going to emerge as the favorite when he gets on the field. Now, again, I'm not saying he's playing this week, definitely, but sooner than later, he's going to be on that field. And with the new regime, however it goes, I don't know what's going to happen with it. I know they're going to start depending on the run some, or they're going to try to. And Cobb, you want fresh blood when it comes to something like that. So Cobb will be a good guy to add for that. And number 10, same team. We I just said with Kendall Wright having an MCL thing, which I don't know when he'll come back. Maybe finally, Doriel Green Beckham, Beckham, excuse me, will have his chance. Like the aforementioned, he's simply a lotto ticket. We know he has a size, we know he has a speed, and we know he has a strength, and now he has the opportunity. The thing is, I've never been as high on him as some of the people that are talking about his dynasty talent, this, that, or the other, but we'll have to see. But I do know this, the, ties, the Titans just recently, as of today, hit a seismic shift. And when that happens, new things happen and new players emerge. Maybe this is the time that he can channel his inner Odell Beckham. We'll see. So that's the top 10 list. I got five um, uh, honorable mentions just to throw in um, in case uh, the wire's been taken. Y'all can't get in these guys. Number 11, Nate Washington. Clear second option on a team that's dependent on the pass because they can't run at all. And with Aaron Foster gone, they're in a world of trouble. Number 12, 
um, Brandon LaFell, high-powered offense. You know what the um, Pats are doing, and you know he has the talent, so it's just a matter of time that he gets some things going. Number 13, Heath Miller. With Big Ben still shaking off rust, he's going to be needed to be the kind of the check down. And you saw it happen this past week where he got over 100 yards. Number 14, Vernon Davis. Just got signed to the Broncos in a trade. I have a feeling about this. I got a feeling he's going to have a couple of nice games. So that's a guy to keep your eye on. And number 15, Kendall Gaskins for the um, San Francisco 49ers. This is no more than a next man up situation, but and it's a and it's a next man situation in the worst team in football. So that doesn't give any promise. But in fantasy, there's no sure thing. We don't know what's happening. We'll have to just see. So for those who are desperate and need a plug and play running back, or just a, another example of a wild card. Maybe pick them up and see what happens because at this point, starting running backs have some value if they are the clear starter, but we don't know that. We don't know if Jared Haynes is going to be re-signed. We don't know. We know they picked up, I think they picked up Sean Drone for one year or something like that, so we don't know. But this is a guy to just add and wait and see. So, uh, but that's it uh, for week nine. Again, um, if you got any questions, hit me up on Twitter and uh this is going to be, this was a long week this past week, but we're heading into that point where right now we're starting to realize who the playoff teams are in our league, in our leagues, rather. Um, in certain t situations where teams are four and four, five and three, three and four, uh, three and five, whatever have you, these are those games where you can't lose. So any of these matchups and grabs that you pick, makes all the world a difference between wins and losses. It's time to get serious now if you're trying to get into the playoffs. So best of luck to you going forward, and we'll see you next week. Have a good one.